Uh, well, I know that at the university there's al already been a chill placed over any discussions about the biological differences between men and women. Mm -hmm. My own students, um, I'm a personality psychologist and so part of my field is gender differences in personality. And my students have already reported to me when they're serving as teaching assistants in their classes that they're very cautious about what sort of claims they make. And it looks to me that one of the law's consequences is that it will make discussions of the biological differences between men and women. It seems extreme to believe this, but it appears to me to make them illegal. Right, right. Which is, which because is the, law in, the law insists that your identity has no relationship to the underlying biology. And in yeah. fact, one of the people I debated, who was a University of Toronto professor, um, he claimed that the scientific consensus for the last four decades is that there was no biological differences between men and women. Right. Well, it's strange too, because it, it invalidates many of the left's own arguments. So for example, with regards to transgender people, there's this idea that you can be a man born in a woman's body or vice versa. And obviously that's a biologically predicated argument. Right. And now that they've switched identity to what's essentially subjective whim in the law, then it seems to me that the proper interpretation of transgender decisions is that it's a matter of choice. The law insists on yes. that. And it insists the same thing with regards to sexual um, orientation. Yes, again, it's this uh, using whatever argument works for you. I mean, the argument on sexual orientation is that it's, in, it's inherent so that it's, it's cruel uh, to make a man right. who's attracted to other men uh, go out and date women. Uh, it's because who he is cannot be changed. Right, in fact, the conversion therapy, so to speak, was banned yes. in, in Ontario on exactly those grounds, and that's exactly. basically a biologically predicated argument. But then when it comes to gender, we're now saying you can take any point on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Or off, or off, or the, off spectrum. the spectrum. Yes, yeah. because that's actually written into the policies. Right. You can be anywhere on the spectrum or nowhere right. between men and women. And um, that was one part of it that I particularly objected to because I really don't understand what it means to be off the spectrum. I don't believe that it's a spectrum to begin with. And you have to use technical language when you're writing legislation. It's not a spectrum, it's a modified bimodal distribution, right? right? So there are feminine men, obviously, and masculine women, but they're a small proportion of the population. The bulk of the population stacks up at the, at the standard gender poles. And to be nowhere on the distribution, I guess that I'm not sure exactly what that means. It could be an error in writing, or it could be referring to these people that claim identities that aren't human. And that's yeah. the next frontier, as far as I can tell. They call them other kins. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, pe people laugh at this yeah. when you explain it. When you talk about other kins, or when you say, I'm supposed to use Z and Zerv and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. But nobody who matters in our society is laughing at this, mm -hmm. including your employers and your students and the government of Canada. They all take this stuff deadly seriously. Yes, well, I got two letters from the university warning me to stop making my, mm -hmm. my public pronouncements that I would refuse to use these non-standard pronouns, even though the pronouns are fabrications and they haven't entered the common parlance. They, they've been in, imposed and that's a legislative novelty to impose a form of speech on someone. It's not a limit on your free speech, it's a demand that you use a certain kind of, in my estimation, ideologically motivated language, very ideologically motivated. And I've studied the development of totalitarianism for a very long time. Right. And one of the things I know is that, well, it's, it's the issue of ceding control over language. And so the government has carelessly made a precedent and the precedent is compelled speech, essentially. Yeah, and, and abso absolutely disgraceful. As you said, this word didn't exist until the day well, before Well, and there's yesterday. all sorts of words. There's yeah. not, and, and there's no agreement on which ones should be used. No, no. And people can also demand to be, to be addressed with one set of words one day and another set another day. That's the yeah. gender fluid types who claim to be men, men one day and women the next. Right, right. I think I'm, a I'm essentially a classic liberal, right. you know, in, in the old school sense. I'm an individualist. Yeah. And, 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 your, and your basic position is you, if someone wants to decide they're an other kin, that's fine for them. But there's no, absolutely no reason why 34 million other Canadians uh, should be compelled by law to accept that. 
Yes, well, that's it. I mean, there's this idea that using someone's pronoun is a mark of respect. You know, if I call you he, that's a mark of respect. And, and that what I'm doing by not using these pronouns on demand is showing lack of respect for someone. And I don't, don't buy that argument at all. There's nothing more generic than referring to someone by the pronoun, and you basically do it based on, their, based on a casual assessment of their appearance. Right. Um, no one has the right to, to impose their interpretation of their own identity on someone else. I mean, even children know that, right? Children have to negotiate a game if they want to play it with other people. Yeah. At least children who've been properly socialized know right. that. Right. And this is, in an actual fact, a kind of desocialization. Yeah, absolutely. Where normal social relations are, uh, are replaced by ever more complex state mediation between mm. different power groups. By subjective whim enforced by state power, right. fundamentally. Right. Yeah. The target of the anti free speech people is uh, you've got to back him or her. One hundred percent, because otherwise they're going to be they're going to be coming for you next, yeah. and that's what they should be doing. It doesn't matter whether it's whether the guy seems a bit and and I in a sense I blame myself for that because when these laws first came in, and it was some kind of crank who uh, wanted to quote Leviticus uh, in a column against homosexuals, you thought, well, you know, what's the big what's the big deal if uh, if they shut him up? And, and the fact is that you may think he's a crank and you may think he shouldn't be quoting Leviticus and saying the godless sodomites are going to roast in hell or whatever. But the fact is, if you won't defend that guy, it just moves in, 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 in all the time and suddenly there's no space for public discourse at all, mm -hmm. as you're now discovering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I would say the press in the first couple of weeks, because this has been going on for about two and a half months now, the press in the first couple of weeks was more ambivalent towards my stance, but they turned hard behind me. Right. And so that was good. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a pattern <laughs> I recognize too. It. That's like they, they don't realize. And, even, and these are people who are in the words business. Yeah. And they don't realize. Yeah. Well, we take, it, we take free speech for granted. We actually take our whole civilization for granted. Mm. And we don't understand that, that it rests on certain foundation blocks and that if you move those blocks, then all hell will break loose. And I think that our civilization is a lot more fragile than people really understand, and that it's also much more imperiled than people understand. I mean, I think we made a huge mistake when Salman Rushdie was put under the fatwa, and also we made a huge mistake when, when those Danish cartoons were published. Yeah. And we're also in a situation now where your right to say anything critical about religious beliefs, unless they're Christian, fundamentally, mm -hmm. Is, is seriously in jeopardy, and that's so dangerous that, that it's, it's almost beyond comprehension. That puts us back in the medieval times. We've been cowed, yeah. and, and we're cowing ourselves as well with these, with these laws that demand equality of opportunity and equality of outcome overall. Um, well, and they were teaching equality of outcome as, as a social good to the HR staff at the University of Toronto with, with their mandatory anti-racism and anti-bias training. Equality of outcome, for God's sake. Yeah. 